Taylor Twelman is here. T, plenty going on at the moment regarding MLS off the pitch. Let's start off, shall we, with the big news that's expected to break next week. Is it really going to happen? Is Beckham's team finally going to arrive <laughs> in Miami? Dan, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, when, when you talk with everyone with inside the league and around this league over the last, I'd say, 72 hours or so, everyone still has the same shrug of shoulders and like, all right, is this really it? Is it really coming? I mean, obviously, with all the actions around MLS expansion, 12 cities, mm. it's all hinged on one decision. Would Miami and David Beckham get their act together and get into this league? Obviously, a massive announcement coming up next week, but I don't think anyone within the circles will fully believe it until they're at the table, the stadium's in the ground, and they're ready to kick off their first game. Because, Dan, when you think of it, it's been over four years since the original announcement. It, it really is extraordinary that that sort of time has elapsed since, as you say, the initial announcement. Looking at it, say it does go ahead, yeah? Beckham obviously was a massive pull when he came over here. Would he have the same sort of gravitas as an owner? I think so. I, I, I do. I think also the city of Miami being a big part of that. I, I think the stadium they build will also be a huge part of that. But make no mistake about it, David Beckham speaks for himself. Everything he's done throughout his career, both on and off the field, and that branding will have a huge say. But this is a massive thing for Major League Soccer and Commissioner mm. Don Garber. They want, they need Miami. When you look at all the business metrics, which has been a key word in Major League Soccer over the last eight months, Dan, regarding Columbus Crew and other cities, Miami, that's the Latino world. That is directly into the Latino, Hispanic world. They need Miami. They need Miami to work. And what a gift for David Beckham, yeah. by the way. When MLS expansion fees are $150, $160 million right now, and he's getting in for, what, maybe 20% of that? Uh, let's stay in Florida, if we may, and head a little bit north up to Orlando, where there's a certain Carl Laren missing at the moment, of course, looking to push through this deal to move to Turkey and play for Besiktas. What's the latest? I don't know, Dan. I, honestly, I'm a little surprised at how the whole situation has played out because when you think of uh, Orlando City in 2017 trading for Dom Dwyer and then obviously the off-the-field situation with Kyle Lahren and, and, and the DUI, I looked at it, it was almost inevitable that, well, okay, Kyle Lahren's going to be gone. What's remarkable to me is, and this is very similar to the Castillo FC Dallas Camilo with uh, yep. Vancouver Whitecaps, is that players are just right now looking at it saying, well, you know what? In order to force the issue, I'm going to go train with the other team. I'm going to have social media pictures go out and force the issue. I, Dan, it's not like I was playing that long ago. There was not much confusion whether or not it was a team option, a player option, guaranteed or not. I just find this all kind of childish, amateurish, because I don't think you see this around the world. And yet, really, Orlando City is going to now ask Kyle Laren, we want you to come back. It just forces the issue and has an ugly look from both sides. I find it kind of ridiculous that Kyle Laren's saying, well, it's an option. And Orlando City is saying, well, the contract's been guaranteed. It just looks foolish, in my opinion. Meanwhile, on the flip side of that, one man who seems to be doing his business the right way is uh, Jack Harrison. Obviously, a lot of rumours suggesting that he could be on his way to Stoke. Do you think this could happen? I do. Uh, I think it's an interesting decision for Patrick Vieira, Claudio Reina, and New York City Football Club because when you look at it, Dan, if they wait one more year because of MLS rules and regulations, if they sell them now, they only get 50% of that. Major League Soccer gets 50% of that. If they wait 12 months, Dan, they get 75% of that transfer fee. So that's why New York City is sitting here trying to maximize that number but when you look at Jack Harrison as a player, he's quick, he's dynamic, loves to get at players 1v1, has really good pace. Yes, he struggled at the end of his second season, uh, didn't score a lot of goals, didn't have a ton of assists, but he's a dynamic player. I think New York City, Claudio Reyna, and Patrick Vieira are content and confident in their ability to find a replacement. I wouldn't be shocked if Jack Harrison's moved. Uh, meanwhile, Taylor, before I let you go, I've got to ask you about Jonathan Gonzalez. Called up to the Mexico squad <laughs> today. Everyone seems to have an opinion on where they went wrong or if this is a big deal. Where do you stand on all of this issue that's been going on for the last few weeks? 
Well, I'm laughing because I can't believe we're still talking about Jonathan Gonzalez. This was a player that less than 12 months ago didn't make the under-20 World Cup roster, and there was no one up in arms. And credit to Jonathan Gonzalez, he turned it around, and then he started playing for Monterey and has the best 11 season. Listen, Dan, before I tell you what I really think, the fact is, U.S. soccer, did they drop the ball? Yes. But this is a player that played 30 times for the youth national team. The discussion being had right now about a player falling through the cracks, a player not on the radar, he played 30 times for the youth national team. If the discussion's about talent development and talent recognition and Tab Ramos's quotes and whatnot, fine. But I cannot believe the discussion right now about a player that played for the youth national teams of the United States 30 times, and the discussion is he fell through the cracks. What crack? The discussion should be player development. Do the coaches and talent scouts realize what's going on? The other thing, Dan, and nobody wants to talk about it, is simply this. The United States didn't make the World Cup. They didn't qualify for the World Cup. So now anything is going to be negative. But Sunil Galati made a decision years ago to give Jurgen Klinsmann the technical director and the head coach title. This is the problem. This is a problem. This is a product of that decision because even though you don't qualify for the World Cup and the head coach is changing and, and Bruce Arena comes in as an interim head coach, the technical director is looking three, five, seven, ten years down the road. That's why you have a technical director so they can make the call, so they can recognize young players coming in. That's also why in the Gold Cup, you don't call in, Dan, the, your, your regulars. You call in Jonathan Gonzalez. You cap tie him. So I can go on and on about this, and yet we're still talking about Jonathan Gonzalez instead of what the root of the problem is. And the root of the problem is from top up, from top to bottom, the United States U.S. Soccer Federation is not organized, and yet we want to talk about did his dad get a call from Thomas Rangan? Did he not? What are we? What are we talking about? That's not the point.